During this video, you're going to learn about the characteristics and adaptations of our next two vertebrae groups, amphibians and reptiles. So these are two other groups that are a part of the vertebrae classification. So let's start with amphibians. Some characteristics of amphibians. Um, the word amphibian means double life because this group of organisms spends part of their lives in the water and part on land. So frogs will start as tadpoles swimming in the water and then they'll develop into frogs. So some examples of amphibians are frogs, toads, and salamanders. Amphibians are ectotherms, which means that their body temperature changes when the temperature of their surroundings change. So they're also known as cold-blooded organisms. Uh, some amphibians go, um, go through hibernation, which is just a period of inactivity when they bury themselves in mud or leaves until the temperature warms. Uh, some of them also go through estivation, which is inactivity during hot, dry months. So how do amphibians breathe? They have this really moist skin that is smooth, thin, and without scales. So the oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange happens through the skin and the mouth lining. They also have these small, simple sac-like lungs in the chest cavity for the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. So some salamanders don't have any lungs at all and they only breathe through their skin, but most amphibians breathe through both their skin and their lungs. So amphibians have a three-chambered heart, which is different than humans. Humans have a four-chambered heart, but this is what it looks like right here. So it has three chambers. So amphibians reproduce in the water. So water is really important for reproduction. The eggs are actually fertilized externally by the male. So the female lay the eggs, and then the male uh, fertilizes the eggs. And most females lay their eggs in a pond or some other body of water. And you may have actually seen this before um, if you've been out on a lake or a pond before. Okay, frogs and toads. They have these short, broad bodies with four legs but no neck or tail. Uh, a physical adaptation they have is strong hind legs that are used for swimming and jumping. They also have these bulging eyes and nostrils that are kind of creepy on top of their head. So that lets them see and breathe while the rest of their body is underwater, so while they're swimming. Uh, their, another physical adaptation are their tongues, which are attached at the front of their mouths. And um, I'm sure you've seen this before when a frog or toad flips out their tongue to get their prey. Uh, most salamanders live in North America, which is where we live, and they have short legs that kind of look like they're sticking straight out of the sides of their bodies, and that's an adaptation because it allows them to move really fast and get away from predators and also catch their prey. Many of these species breed on land, and the fertilization is internal, so the female lays her eggs and they're already fertilized. Okay, reptiles. This is a whole different group than amphibians. One thing that they have in common with amphibians is that they are ectothermic as well. So again, that means that their internal body temperature changes with the temperature of its surroundings. They are cold-blooded animals. Uh, what's different about reptiles is they have thick, dry, scaly skin. So it's like the exact opposite type of skin that amphibians have. Their skin is covered with scales, and that helps them reduce water loss and protects them from injury. So... They have this dry skin because a lot of these reptiles live in these really dry climates and environments, and so that protects them from the heat and just um, how hot it is and how dry it is. So reptiles have lungs that they breathe with, and most of them have a three-chambered heart. The uh, reptile that has a four-chambered heart is a crocodile. So crocodiles are different than the other reptiles. So like I said, crocodiles have a four-chambered heart, which is different. They have a narrow head with a triangular-shaped snout, and these organisms are some of the few reptiles that actually care for their young. Uh, lizards and snake, uh, a physical adaptation that they have is a jaw that has this special joint that unhinges and increases the size of their mouth, and that allows them to eat some really big organisms. Turtles are the only reptiles that have a shell, and it's made of these hard, bony plates, and so that's a physical adaptation that protects them from predators. Uh, they don't have any teeth, but they have a really powerful jaw 
uh, that's kind of like a beak. So it allows them to eat some um, hard organisms, organisms that have hard shells. And that is everything that we will talk about with amphibians and reptiles. Um, we will talk more about these tomorrow in class. Have a great rest of your day.